presentation about the new uh, admin UI for OpenCast Maton that we're uh, proposing. And uh, basically, those of you who have been uh, at San Diego last year will consider this uh, a kind of deja vu in that uh, I did a presentation uh, with the same title, I think. Uh, and introducing a, a solution for, for the uh, new admin UI. It was uh, Christoph Driesen who presented at that time uh, a cooperation with, with Entwine, ATR and Entwine, and the technology we have chosen was, was Vardin at that time. Um, quite a few things happened in, in the meantime. Um, first of all, I should say that there have been delays in the uh, lecture, lecture capture migration at ETH, which I won't go into. Uh, but uh, one thing I should mention is that... Uh, during the discussions we had with Entwine, uh, we discovered that there was a higher workload and therefore a higher budget uh, in this uh, project. So we were uh, sort of uh, in a situation where even the uh, ATH budget uh, was, was very tight with respect to the new admin UI, and we were very happy that uh, Entwine was, was able to also invest into uh, this project and into the new admin UI. Uh, substantially, and uh, as you will know, switch uh, the the Swiss national um, uh, network provider has has entered the scene, which is uh, something that we uh, feel very comfortable with at uh, ATR, of course. And they also had some some dedicated requirements around the admin UI, and they also had the ability to uh, do some some major investments into this project. So, basically. Uh, in the course of the last 12 months, we uh, then suddenly had a situation where we saw uh, a cooperation between uh, Switch and Antoine and ETH as being the, the best possible solution to, uh, to lift uh, the, the new admin UI, which is some more heavy lifting, I think, uh, than we expected. At least we at ETH expected. I tend to think that uh, uh, some other people will have expected that uh, prior to, to us. Um, also, we did receive some, some community feedback, of course, uh, after the presentation we did uh, at San Diego. Um, Entwine certainly uh, had uh, <coughs> discussions with their customers and their expectations around a new admin UI. I think there have been a number of presentations that touched upon the uh, capabilities of the, of the current admin UI and the restrictions that you have with the current admin UI. So that was uh, additional input to our project, and I mentioned that uh, Switch was, was joining that. So it's basically uh, what we tend to call a strategic cooperation, um, but it's a little bit more than that. <clears throat> and for those of you who haven't been with the, with the project from the start, I would like to go back a couple of years. When we started the, the, the Matterhorn project, there was a kind of uh, responsibility for different modules within the, within the project, within the product. So, for example, there was the capture agent section, which was uh, very much connected to the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, there was the uh, engage end, which was uh, in Osnabrück, and there was uh, sort of the, the back end and, and the, the, the architecture, which, which was shared between UCB and, and ETR with uh, the then developers Josh Holtzman and Tobias Wunden. And we kind of uh, sort of lost that responsibility throughout the uh, process of, of going fully open source. You know, it was a, a funded project at that time, and we're, we're now a, f a full open source project. And in a way, we, we still see some fragments of that responsibility. So, for example, Osnabrück taking care of a new player, basically, is, is part of that, I, I guess. And we wanted to make sure that there was also a, a kind of responsibility with respect to the... Uh, admin UI, and that's really the investment that Switch plus ETH plus Entwine are looking into at the moment. So it's, it's also a kind of commitment to sort of continually uh, improve that admin UI. Um, I'm not going to go into the technological details. Uh, those of you who know me know why I wouldn't. Um, basically, you see what it says there. Um, I would like to mention that uh, there have been designers involved in this project, which is uh, something new as well for, for the Open Cars Motorhorn project, uh, at least after the uh, funded phase. Um, they are here. They are sitting over there. And they will be um, 
pleased to, to get your feedback, basically, and, and receive questions after the demo that you get from Tobias, because they then can answer these questions as far as the design concepts are concerned tomorrow in a, in a separate session. Um, just to, to mention what, what our original intention was, uh, I mentioned that there were local needs at ETH with respect to the admin UI. Basically, you could say that we were trying to replicate our existing uh, admin UI with our existing video management system, or at least some major features of that particular video management system. Um, I think I should mention the, the tracker which basically means that you can follow uh, an object, a, a media package, through the workflow, and then you can comment uh, upon that particular media package. And in that way, you can sort of share tasks between different people. So, for example, if there is a video that has to be edited, you can comment upon that and tell the, the person in charge of editing to do so. Or if there's a video to be deleted, you can do that in, in a way that the person or the only person that is allowed to delete uh, videos has sort of the ability to then look at all the media packages where there's a comment uh, with respect to deletion, for example. This also means that we move from uh, move away from the from the a bit from the workflow perspective of of the current admin UI, more towards what we call events. Even though that's not a very good term, uh, you might also say series. But basically, the idea is that it becomes more a representation of the reality where we work, at least at ETA, and I presume that's the case with you as well, where people tend to talk about different events. So, for example, a recording of a specific course is, is an event, and a recording of a specific conference is something that you can then refer to within the admin UI as well. Also, we were looking into enhanced metadata. <clears throat> Again, those of you who know me uh, know my secret love for metadata. Uh, which is not that secret anymore. Um, so instead of uh, a limited set of, of uh, uh, Dublin Core metadata, we wanted to have uh, a full set of metadata from, from the Dublin Core range. Plus, we wanted to have some, some local um, metadata uh, because we didn't want to continue misusing certain Dublin Core fields for information that weren't supposed to be there. So, for example, if you have say, information about a corrupt audio track, and you want to display that in, in your distribution, basically there's no place to put that in the, current, in the current situation. And we want a dedicated field that then says, OK, this audio track is corrupt between minute 55 and 57, whatever. Also, uh, we would like to make it easier to actually edit uh, the, the media package that is metadata mainly, so changes in the... Uh, post-production changes in the metadata. So there has been additional speaker, or the spelling of that particular name is, is wrong. So go back and edit that stuff. And we certainly wanted to uh, include the, the video editor uh, um, Rudiger has just shown you. So that was the reason why, why ETH was moving towards the new admin UI, plus, as I said, uh, to uh, see to the admin UI becoming a shared responsibility between the three parties. And I think that uh, Sven can now talk about what uh, Switch had in mind when they decided to actually join that project. Okay. Now it is. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So my name is Switch, for those I haven't yet talked to. Uh, my name is Sven from Switch, sorry. <laughs> that was maybe a bit too fast. Um, as Olaf has just told you, um, Switch uh, has also its own requirements to the admin UI. Um, actually, when we first had our Matterhorn pilot installation, we were a bit disappointed by its UI, uh, not just because of its look, but also because of what it does. I mean, it's very much focused on workflows. I mean, it's important. I mean, finally, this system does produce. It does production stuff. And you need a way to, well, monitor your production to see problems, see whether it works or not. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, you get some videos ingested in the system. 
then they are there, there in the system. <laughs> Maybe they are still processed or have been processed or have been published or will be published, whatever, they have kind of a state. And you somehow want to find videos where the production has failed. So this is more for su support and kind of make sure that the videos actually get produced. But you maybe also want to find a video that already has been produced. So from our point of view, it's, the system is a bit too much folk focused on uh, workflows now and should be a bit more focused on the videos. This does not mean that there is no way to find workflows and see what's currently happening, who is interesting, what is in production and so on. But there should be also a view that is more focused on videos to find videos. So in the case that you want to reproduce them or pro, uh, publish them or retract them or whatever. So that was our first finding. And this is also the major part of the current admin UI that does not fit the requirements of Switch very well. Um, we are currently uh, in the project, we are just replacing the Apple podcast producer by Matterhorn. That's something ongoing now for several months. Uh, we work together with Entwine, as I announced this at that time on the mailing list. And since we realized that also uh, the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology has interest in an admin UI. We managed to somehow get <laughs> a talk to each other. And, well, we ended up finding out that our requirements are not that different. I mean, simply said, we do want a better UI in general. It's not even so much about how exactly it looks and what exactly it it does, it should be better, better usability. Uh, for us, it's also important that um, to support costs, so I mean, there are people involved fixing up stuff that has not worked as it, had, uh, as it should, uh, which costs money. Um, so it should be possible to find problems fast, fix them fast, and this is also something that uh, goes way better when a UI has a better usability. <laughs> so I don't want to talk actually, actually too much. So I leave the show to Tobias from Antwine then. But just uh, some points that are important for, for Switch. Uh, what we, for example, miss is the notion of the of ownership of series and videos. So that that series and episodes uh, can belong to somebody that is able to manage them, also to lead them, maybe. So a person that is kind of responsible for it. Um, we also miss a bit the ability to delegate sets of permissions. So I think we heard this today already, that it would be nice if a person could just trim a video, but not do any other things, all the stuff that the admin UI could. Um, we would also like to restrict the set of persons that can, for example, upload video into a specific series or also that can view videos. And to not clutter the UI too much, <laughs> we would also like the possibility that this UI can actually show or not show UI element and elements depending on the role. So this is just a few points. We have many others on the wish list, <laughs> but I don't want to talk too much about things that we may not be able to do. Um, well, so let's see what has been done. <laughs> is this working? It is working. I need to put it up a little. Yeah, I was afraid that I had to show something that's working. Um, danke. Referring to the list that Olaf um, presented, the feature list by ETH, um, I'm, I'm happy re to report that I think out of your five features that you listed, we were able to complete two. 
I wouldn't say that's our usual success rate, but... Um. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, basically here to um, show you what has been done, what has been completed. Uh, someone is trying to log me into the guest network. I apologize. But since I'll, I'll actually try to do a live, at least a very short live demo part, I'll make sure this is actually working. Bear with me for a second. There we go. Okay, so what, I, what I'm going to do is, um, from, a, from a, a technical perspective, I'm going to walk you through what was on the agenda from our point of view. Um, we, had, we had ETH's high-level requirements. You know, they wanted the video editor, they wanted the, um, the tracking and, and things. And um, what we wanted from our point of view, we wanted a, a new technology base um, for the admin UI. The admin UI is, is quite dated. Uh, we started work on that, and was that five years ago, maybe six? Um, lots of things happened in the UI itself, so people were adding things here and there. Um, also, use cases changed quite a bit over time. So we're, we're now, you know, those five or six years down the road, we've seen number of things. We've seen MOOCs. We've seen uh, lots of adoption in, in all kinds of ways, like, you know, Crazy Stuart um, with, <laughs> what was that? Craziness, I think. I'm just citing Olaf, so this is, I'm, I'm not actually saying that. Um, now, I, I think we've learned a lot in, in terms of what needs to be accomplished and what an admin UI um, would need to offer. And um, so we, we tried to get a little little closer to, to that. Um, so what are those requirements? Um, the technology, obviously, um, would need to suit the, the community because um, even though we, we, you know, there might be a, w a vendor um, today and there might be a group of designers today that are, you know, getting it done and, and putting it out there, at some point people will be adopting it, will we'll start to make changes to it, and we want the community to be able to do those changes in, in a good way, right? So, so get the setup done in a way that everybody can can walk in, make changes in a controlled way, in a, in a sustainable way, in a documented, tested, and so on and so forth way. So that was really important to us. Um, this is basically covering the, the modern and, and proven development stack. So I, I'll, um, I'm going to talk to all of those um, in more details, go close. 100% um, test coverage, or very, very close to that, um, was really important. Support for... Um, localization and internationalization. Um, so right now we've basically cut off anybody who was not able to read and speak English, right? That was, uh, that was mostly English. Um, we have been, Andy and I had the, the chance to visit um, Japan last week. We went to Tokyo uh, visiting the guys who um, visited us um, back, when was that, in January of last year. Yeah, they were here in Harvard, you're right, and they were also at San Diego insisting that, that they, they really needed a, a Japanese um, version of, of whatever we're producing. So we made sure internationalization is really baked into the whole setup. Um, code and style documentation. Right now there's no style documentation. You know, you just add whatever you need to add. Um, and Twine is, is a famous... Um, contributor in, in that sense. So we, we added the, the uh, access control and security stuff. Uh, we, you know, we can discuss if, if that was in the, in the best. Um, well, anyways, let's not talk about um, <laughs> past times. <laughs> We're certainly guilty um, um, as much as anybody else. And we wanted to make sure when, when this is progressing, because we did put a lot of effort into this, and I, I'll emphasize a lot. In all, by all means, we're talking time and, and nerves and, and also financials. Uh, we want to make sure this is as sustainable as it gets and documentation um, will help us get things right and keep things um, the way they should be. Yeah, and in the end, um, the, the goal also um, was to make sure that um, there's no need to fork the, the code base very soon just so you can add one button or change a color somewhere. We wanted to make sure people can get a certain amount of customization done without having to fork the code base. Okay, and that's what we came up with. <laughs> so, and that's it, thank you. <laughs> I like the use of white space. 
Yes, it's um, at the, the white point is, is a bit, um, is, is not really great here, I think. Um, so it looks much nicer on my screen. Um, it's the, it's the, I changed. So you have 12 pixels plus white. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just get rid of the slide, so, um, because it, it was, it was not, um, the whole thing anyways. I just wanted to, so this was the actual UI you were looking at. Um, it was the Japanese version, the localized Japanese version. Um, and I'm, I'm now, you'll see more of that um, really soon. So um, in terms of technology, Olaf mentioned it already, we were talking about, um, about Vardin um, in the beginning. Why was that? Um, obviously, um, Matterhorn is, is all Java. Everything in Matterhorn is Java, except for the third-party tools who are not in Java, but we don't care about those, um, with the exception of Lars, <laughs> who's going crazy about, about um, the command lines. Um, so Java was, would, would have been great because then that, that would have meant that you know, everybody could, could get coding um, in the admin UI, which you know, is definitely um, a good thing. We would have been able to use existing Java services because you're, if you're in the Java world, you, you just pull in the services you want to talk to. Like if you want to create a series, you get hold of the series service, you tell it to add the series, and you're good. Right? Whereas if, you're, if you were doing a classic web application, that web application would be talking via REST calls. So there needs to be a REST endpoint. So you need to build a REST endpoint you know, for reading, for writing, for creating lists, and so on and so forth. Lots of work. And uh, write once, run, run everywhere is a, is a slogan we've heard before. Um, it is almost true for, for Vardin. So you, you code the application once. It's all done on the, on the back end and it's rendered um, for the actual client. So it would run on mobile, it would run on all browsers, you know. Um, but it, it's working pretty well. So, so Bardin would have really been a, a good choice, I think. On the downside, um, you know, coding in, in, the, in the UI would require a, a Java engineer. Um, if you're hiring people, um, many times Java engineers are harder to find and are more expensive. Um, then finding a UI person that you know can can get a button in place or something or or work on on style sheets and things, and um, also there was some uncertainty about the framework's future. So Vardin is is owned by by one company. Uh, that company very much controls what's happening um, with the framework, and it's a bit unclear like what would happen. You know, should that company go away? So. And also there was, um, as Olaf mentioned, feedback from the community. Some people were um, close to upset with our choice of Vardin for, for different reasons. So we went back to the drawing board considering all those, all those points. And the, the actual reason we, we did not, not go for a, um, like a JavaScript framework in the very beginning, which would also have been kind of an obvious choice, was that there are JavaScript frameworks popping up all over the place. Like we had, we had the mention of, of Backbone, Require.js, Node.js. I can't name them all. Um, those, were, <laughs> those were the ones that actually stayed around, but there were many, many that came up, were hyped a lot, and then went away. Um, most of them solving one problem only, so they were focused on doing one thing really well. Um, but there was um, no possibility to use them to create large applications. And the Matterhorn admin UI is, is you know, not a huge application, but it's also not a one-pager. So you need something that, that is not only solving one problem. Though. So finally, we decided to go with AngularJS, mostly because of the negative points that I had on the, on the previous slides. We actually wanted to, to be able to get web developers and get, the, get those developers their own technology <coughs> stack so they can do their work and we can do the work on the back end. Um, it was important to us to, to um, allow for modular, uh, modularization. This is going into the, um, you know, I wanna add something but I don't wanna fork the code base. So it needs to be modular so I can, you know, replace small parts and pieces of it. And what we definitely didn't want to do is, is um, DOM manipulation level. So we didn't want to write JavaScript that would you know, set a CSS flag on some strange um, div container, nested in some other div container, and so on. Um, JavaScript has evolved, has evolved to a level where, where you can actually do high-level programming um, in a declar declarative way, um, rather than, you know, as I said, imperative um, DOM manipulation way. Testing was big. 
um, and Angular is is um, great in all of these. Angular is a, is a JavaScript framework that is made for larger applications. It's used by big players um, and also uh, developed by big players like Google's, like Google, and it has been around for a couple of years. I think it was um, written in 2009. It's still around. It's still growing. Lots of people are using it, so it seems like um, we found the perfect candidate. Any questions so far? Okay, everybody happy with AngularJS? Who has done work? Who has done work in AngularJS so far? One. Good. That's good. That's promising. Okay, that will change soon. I'm sure. So um, when you start working with um, work with AngularJS. Uh, you're looking at a, at a new development stack. It's not Maven anymore. It's not you know Eclipse and, and friends. Um, the tools were mentioned already. I'm ha I was happy to hear that that the engaged players. Well, I knew that before, but you know, <laughs> today we heard it again. Um, they're using the same tools or same tool set. So um, you didn't mention Grunt though. I think yeah, Grunt is something that helps. It's basically a Maven replacement. Um, Everyone who knows what I'm talking about, um, please forgive me, because I, I don't. Um, so that's for the JavaScript layer part. Um, I was talking about the uh, internationalization. Um, we selected a platform, a web platform, that allows to help everyone, especially non-engineers, with translation. So the translation is actually happening outside of the code base, which I think is what we want, because then we can, you know, have anyone with a little bit of domain knowledge um, work on that. On the test coverage, um, everything is tested um, using the exact same stack as, as um, the um, Theodore Pass um, player team is using, Jasmine, Selenium, um, JS Hint for, for JavaScript um, quality. And then there's a Karma runner as um, as part of the build, so actually, as part of the Maven build on your build server, you can you can run all of the all of the tests um, that make sure the uh, UI is, is um, behaving as expected. And since people are kind of reluctant, I think to to show like live demos, I'm I'm going to try that right now with something that's um, very exciting, which is an actual a, a test run. If I can get it on the screen, hold on. Uh, there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start um, the admin UI locally. So this is just the, the web part, and I'm not I, I'm putting this up ju just to show you. You know, this is really separate from from the Matterhorn um, part. Seems to be running, which is great. So the admin UI is now running on on port nine thousand and one. Um, next thing is I'm going to start the Selenium server which is also looking just as expected. And uh, here I'm, I'm going to execute all the tests. So I, you know, this is what, what's actually um, run as part of the build. Now I need to find the, um, see, so the whole UI, and, and here I'm kind of giving you a demo of the admin UI. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you wanna take screenshots, please hurry up. <laughs> No, seriously. So, so uh, I'm I'm really proud of that. Lots of work went into this. Every single input field, every button is tested and is tested every time we build. And I think we should try to stick to that as um, as much as possible. I um, hope you're you're fine if I if I kill this um, for now. Um, I'm happy to demo it after the fact. You know, in in, in full length. Um, and um, yeah, basically. This is the test coverage right now. You know, quite a number of lines of code. Um, second number is lines of code for, for tests. Um, 38 tests, unit tests, assertions. And um, this is what it looks like once it's completed, you know. Um, yeah, so let's make sure we, we keep the tests um, consistent and, and uh, complete. Moving over to globalization. Um, I was talking um, before about globalization. It's internationalization using that crowding platform as well as localization when it comes to the display of dates and times and durations and things. They also differ, they differ from language to language. 
On the left, you can see the number of languages um, that we're currently supporting. Um, I don't need to read them uh, to you, I guess. Um, an important part of, of globalization, so one, one thing that's obvious is the, the, um, the web UI layer, right? There are buttons and tabs and labels and menus and things, so you translate them. The problem is, so what, what if your um, code base is generating errors? <coughs> you know, so there's some Java code that says, hey, I can't find that file. Then, you know, in your nice Japanese UI, you out of a sudden you get, I don't know, German, <laughs> German error messages if, if Lars wrote the code. So um, this is something we had to overcome, and, and fortunately enough, um, as part of our work um, for Switch, we were able to attack that problem as well. So um, I'll, I'll uh, talk to you about um, incidents handling, uh, hopefully tomorrow, and um, there we'll see how to generate localized error messages from within the code base. So I think we're, we're at a point where almost everything um, that we would potentially see in the admin UI is actually localized or could be localized if developers are, are happy to take on the effort. Quick look on, the, on that um, platform. Rudiger, do you know how I can get the screen right? You yeah. seem to. Go on um, uh, monitor setup. Monitor setup, I can do that. And then next. Scaled. This one. Sorry for those who are recording. Sorry, we sent it. <laughs> okay, I'll use this one. Let's see, because this is really annoying. Does that look any better? It seems like it does. Thanks a lot. I'm going to show you the first screen at the end of the presentation again. So this is um, a, a sample of, this is obviously not the, the Matterhorn project. I just wanted to show you how, how this thing works. Um, you basically, this is also not working well. Um, you basically see all the languages that are supported on the left um, over here. So we don't actually have an Afrikaans um, localization yet. Um, here you see, um, you know, how much is, is translated, how much of those translations have been approved, because that platform is a, is a crowd platform, a crowdsourcing platform, so you, you just put things up, and you can ask the, uh, a machine to translate it for you, like get a first transla translation in place, and at the same time, um, you're, you're looking towards a community to get it done. You can also put down money, which is what we did for um, Japanese, because we don't happen to have Japanese speakers on the team. Um, so you, you can put down money, it's actually not that much, and, and get a first pass um, on the translation done. With these bars, you can easily see whether your translation is still up to date and complete. So as soon as you start adding new keys, uh, you'll see over here that now you need to go back and you know add those keys to French and, and Japanese and Norwegian and whatnot. Um, this is a screenshot taken from the Matterhorn project. So here you see again like the, the numbers. Norwegian is translated. Um, by um, 81%. And the last screenshot here is showing the translation of a single term. It's called the dashboard. Uh, Tableau de Beau is, is what, the, um, what Pascal um, suggests, or he, I think he, he basically approved um, the machine translation. So far, so good. OK, um, last. Item on our requirements list was the local modifications. Uh, we're talking about um, the workflow options that today's Matterhorn UI um, offers you. Um, Rudiger was showing that. You can kind of, you know, you can, for example, check um, to have the um, vid video cutting or editing turned on. Um, so that is changing with every workflow. So it would be great if, if you know, that, part, that kind of um, modification would still be there. Um, there are less obvious ones like, um, uh, Olaf's request for, for extensible metadata. So we all know title and date and, and presenter. Um, but when you talk to Olaf, you, you'll learn that there are actually hundreds of, of additional metadata fields you could be um, adding. And um, yeah, it would be nice if, if Olaf could get those fields without having to, to maintain his own version of the Matterhorn admin UI just because he needs you know 100 additional fields. 
you did design for those 100 additional fields, did you? Okay. Good. And then uh, completely unknown ones, uh, obviously, like, like um, functionality that, that is not, not here right now, never thought of, and so needs to go somewhere. Right? Um, for example, um, Stuart is, is going to, to have us add um, a UI for the opt-out system. Stuart already mentioned um, opt-out, the opt-out policy at Manchester this morning. Um, there's lots of scheduling done with, uh, with an external database, Syllabus Plus, and um, you know, people can log in and say, yes, I, I want to be recorded. No, I don't want to be recorded. Um, these kind of things, you know, somehow need to get into the UI. Good, so far for the requirements. And uh, so here's a, a first walkthrough. Um, what is new? What, what, what do we think is new with regards to the old uh, or the current admin UI? Um, we're, we're hoping it's a more modern and more consistent look and feel. Um, Olaf and, and also Sven mentioned the focus on events rather than workflows. So I think over time we've learned that there's, a, there's someone that is looking at the system and, and, the, and the UI that is, that is concerned with like how much is going on in my system. You know, is it, do I need to scale it? Is it busy? Is it not busy? Are there any errors? You know, but they're not concerned with, with like, you know, oh, what, what is this recording? Who recorded it? What series um, does it, you know, belong to? Um, so there's this other role, um, we, we call that role the, the asset manager or the, the producer or, you know, someone that is, is more um, dealing with, with the actual content and, and what needs to be done with that. Um, dealing with metadata, dealing with um, access rights and things. So we try to shift the focus away from workflow um, to events or recordings or, or whatever the terminology might be. Um, there are, um, because of, um, of the mention of uh, the way the web frameworks work, um, there are now dedicated back-end RESTful services for the UI, so we obviously weren't able to talk to the Java services directly, and we didn't want to modify the existing REST APIs, so we had to implement dedicated UIs, dedicated um, services for the UI, um, with pros and cons, obviously. We try to add initial um, support for roles. So we, we still are facing the problem that um, the roles that um, are in place at ETH don't match or don't necessarily match the roles that are um, present at uh, UC Berkeley. You know, people might have just different um, tasks to get done. So what we try to do is, is add light support for roles by the means of, of um, you know, you're, you're able to filter um, certain views um, your way like you want to only look at recordings from you know this series, or only look at recordings that are in fail state, um, and you want to want to get back to those easily. And um, the last thing that I think is new, it's minor, or people will consider it minor, but you can actually now, you know, hand out URLs to to like very very specific pieces of information. Um, very often when you build a, a web app, you you get those like single URL web apps. I'm not sure if you know what I mean. It's always like the slash, and then there's some 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 dash, and, and um, yeah, that that's it, right? And even though you click around the application, the URL always stays the same. So if you look at at something and you send that URL to your friend, you know they will they will open the URL and be brought back to the home page. And um, so we we made sure this is built in. And before I'm going to show you the screenshots, here's here's a disclaimer. Um, Please read it yourself. Um, you, you may not be happy with what you see or with every detail that you see. That's the first thing, that it's, it's impossible. Um, Judy can, can sing a song. <laughs> um, Judy was, was in charge of, of uh, UX, um, UI and UX, I think, um, of the first admin UI. Um, there were lots and lots and lots of discussions, partly nice, partly less nice um, discussions. It's always difficult, so UI is, is also a matter of taste. Um, the other um, part of the disclaimer that is not, not on here is um, not everything you will see in screenshots is what you will get once the thing is done. We're still um, in transition mode, so we, we got most of the, of the um, AngularJS part done. We're still um, getting design work done, so we, we already are in kind of in the second phase where we, we saw certain things and, and are switching them around. So, you know, don't raise your finger and say, hey, this button looks completely wrong. It, it may be completely wrong. 
um, and it may go away. No user testing has been done because we're not done implementing. And um, yeah, I'm happy to announce, as Olaf did already, that um, the guys from Spice Labs are here um, who did all of the design work. Um, and um, they will hopefully be, they will definitely be talking uh, you through the style guide that they developed for us. And um, they may also take initial feedback of, of what you see in here. So if you have complaints, you know, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Good. Um, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to, to walk you through like very basic um, parts of the UI. I'm not going to give you the full run through um, just because of, of time reasons. And, and again, we're, we're not looking at, at the final work um, yet. I'm sure at Manchester will we'll be completely done. Things will be working. Uh, work from, from Stuart and also a Switch will have been integrated most likely. So that will be way more exciting, um, I guess. So we made sure there's, um, there's consistent list views um, across the applications. Um, this is also not final, but um, you, can, you can filter um, every view. You can obviously page the view. You can say how many, how many entries you want to see per page, just like in the old or current, I need to say the current admin UI. Um, <coughs> there's a main navigation that you'll see in more detail right now. Um, there's at the top, um, there's uh, the language switch, there's a notification area, um, there's a user area, so this is me, I'm logged in as, as uh, I guess, the admin um, right now. Feel free to, you know, raise your hand, just don't point at individual buttons. Yes? I'm just going to make a com design comment on one of the fields, even though it has nothing to do with you, right? <laughs> no, but it was interesting, the failed, um, our producers mentioned having that as a red, yellow, green, as in hold, you know, good to go, or red being failed. So interesting. You know, it is interesting to see the choices. And as indicated, there will be a session, and I presume that the colleagues will be writing down these questions and answer them tomorrow in the separate session so that Tobias can continue. Okay. Good. I intentionally picked the Japanese version again, just to make sure we're not talking about individual things. You know, what, what I really want to make sure is, is you know, this, this is what, what in general a, a table view looks like. I'm sure you've seen table views before. Um, it's nothing spectacular. Um, the, the main navigation that you saw on the, on the left, um, you can pull it down and you get the, the major sections. There's a dashboard, there's events and series, there's system, uh, capture agents, and users. You, you get tool tips if you hover over them. Uh, we may come to the conclusion at some point that you know this doesn't work, we need to add text by default. People have suggested you know, making sure it's, it's um, unfold um, by default or expanded by default. Um, we decided to not do that um, because you know, we're, we're displaying lots of data so you want to make sure you get as much data displayed as usual. And um, the, the idea was that, that um, the way um, the sections have been laid out, laid out and um, with the idea in mind that um, there are roles, like there, there are a few people that will like, navigate through the whole UI all the time. So you know, we, we may get away with hiding the navigation most of the time because people will be in their area of concern and you know, use use filtering and sorting and these kind of things. It may turn out to be to be a, a false assumption or an incomplete. Um, yeah, you'll you'll tell us. Uh, and uh, again, these guys will. It's their ideas. I'm, I'm just showing what you know they came up with. Um, in terms of list views, um, just to focus on a, on a couple of details, um, you saw the actions column. It is very similar to what we have in, in Matterhorn right now. Um, the goal again is, or the idea behind that again, is that um, the actions may, there may be multiple actions over time. You know, we may be building um, uh, on top of that. Um, yeah. Again, icons can be, can be discussed with, with the guys up here. In case you're wondering um, about this icon, the one, because those are kind of self-explanatory, delete, this is playback, this is details. And here, um, that's the um, tracking feature that Olaf was requesting. So basically here you see um, the, the lower one. Um, somebody made a comment, but everything is fine. 
um, up here, you, you'll see that you know there are comments, they're unresolved, um, they're new. You know, you haven't looked at them. We'll get the chance, I guess, to to talk about the tracking feature in, in more detail. Just want to make sure you're not sitting there and thinking, oh. Um, we made sure there there is design for for um, feedback. So when you when you edit something or you, you like you delete a row or you, you get an error message of some kind, um, there's a fixed place in the UI that that um, can show the um, the feedback. Um, lots of thought and and also I think two redesigns already went into the filtering part. Um, so this is also not the final implementation um, again, but it's it's getting close. So what you can see here on the right, um, there is a filter on the location column, and everything is shown that is you know location two. That may be you know some room, some some capture agent in our case. This is how you create a filter. Um, basically, you you know you pull down the menu. It's a you know we have a fixed set of columns in the UI, so there's a fixed set of filter criteria that you can use, and then depending on what what filter criteria you use, you get a different um, autocomplete. Basically, so obviously, when it comes to status, you can you can filter by um, is it ingesting, is it processing, and so on and so forth. Best part is um, you can now go ahead and and filter that or save that filter set. So if you're regularly looking at location two, um, you know you may want to save it as as your filter and pull it up by you know just selecting the filter set from. From uh, the menu again, this is nothing earth scattering. I think we've seen that before, but I also think it's it's nice that it's now implemented in in our UI. Where, yes. Where the filter is saved, there is they are saved in your HTML5 local storage. So this is one thing I I, I kind of did not say. Um, the admin UI requires for full functionality an HTML5 browser. Which is every modern browser out there, um, but if if you're still on Internet Explorer six, it's not working for you. Please raise your hand if you're still on Internet Explorer six. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, details view. Uh, I'll do my best to to try another live demo, just to make sure you you, you trust me and and. You believe that there's actually something working? <laughs> Almost. So this is the local version. So it's running on my laptop. It's not connecting to a Matterhorn instance at the moment. All data is fake. All the design is non-final. <laughs> um, so basically, what we were looking at uh, here, I can go at um, take a look at this at this recording. What's opening is is a model. Um, that gives me like all the details. You know, I can I can look at metadata. Um, I can start editing metadata. All this language, the design language, is also not final. It's being worked on. Um, so you can go in. You can change things around. You'll get um, visual feedback on fields that you have changed. It's not working right now because it's all mocked, not um, connected to a server. So I'm unable to to demo it at the moment. Um, here are here's the comment section, for example, or or at least a, a first version of that. Uh, also, not completely final. So Andy made a comment. You know, there was something wrong with the recording. There was no audio, and then Olaf said, "Well, you know, I just downloaded it. I added the you know added the audio track from the backup. Um, you know, he can then I don't know. He can most likely he can he can go in. Let me see." Again, not final. It's it's looking ugly. I know it. <laughs> I can I can type in my answer. You know, I fix everything. I turn on the resolved uh, button. I hit reply. Um, nothing happens because again, it's it's mock data. But this is this is basically how it works. You can you can navigate data sets. So you, you should you should notice that here we're looking now at a at a different at a different record. So you don't have to you know exit the model, go to the next data set, open it. You can actually browse through. Um, there was a lot of discussion on on uh, whether a modal would would work well, or whether we would want to expand, you know, from the list. Um, I'm sure the gentlemen over there um, are talking to that as well. At least I hope so. This is just, you know, we're we're going to try that approach and we'll see what sticks. Let's put it that way. Is that fair to say? 
Okay. Well, Andy did lots of the work on, on wireframes and initial concepts, which is why, why I put a microphone next to him so he can yell at me if I'm, I'm not um, following through. Okay, yeah, you see the language menu down here. Um, and anything else is, is again, nothing, nothing that you haven't seen before. Okay, back to slides, unless there are comments. Again, don't talk about individual buttons, please. <clears throat> so one problem we've identified with the admin UI um, is if I'm sort of uh, focused on the current semester, let's say at Berkeley, the way we use the admin UI, I don't really want to have to dig through everything from last semester or from past semesters. So, um, you know, I want to essentially make sure that all my views or perhaps browse by dates, because mm -hmm. that's really how, you know, I think that people think when they're using mm -hmm. the tool. So does that, is that become easier? I mean, it, or do I have to, and, you know, as far as saving filters, I mean, that will work on my laptop at work, but it won't be available at home. So, you know, I got to make sure yeah. all my filters are kind of copied in all those locations. Yeah. The HTML5 storage of, of filter data is, is, the, is not the poor man's solution, but certainly the, the cheap solution. Um, we, we can transfer those, uh, those things, obviously, uh, as you know <laughs> very well by yourself, and we can move those to a, to a database backend, you know, make sure they're loaded when you log in. Um, it's just, it's additional work. So we, we, went, we went over budget here, I think, four times by now. And so we, we try to, you know, keep things to a, to a minimum, um, but still make sure, you know, there's, there's a lot of value in there. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you gave the solution or, or one possible solution already. Like, you know, we could be adding a semester column if we have the semester data available, which I, I think we do. We can extract it. And then it's a, it's a default filter would be my initial solution right now. Guess, Stephen. Um, I'm just a bit confused about what an event is and its relationship to as we understand it currently, you know, a workflow, a recording, join, join the crowd. a series, and an episode as belonging to the archive, because we've sort of got to the point where a recording is a workflow, that, but you know, a set of those belong to a series, mm -hmm. and you can get rid of your workflow data because you put it in the archive, which is your long-term storage. So what does that look like in this future world that has events in this new UI? Like, what is so an we, event conceptually? Yeah, we tried up to come. We tried to come up with a consolidated view of all the recordings that are known, either known to happen, like they're scheduled, they're being processed in the system, they're archived, they're published, they're you know they're e either scheduled or they're in the system already. That's all we know about, right? So th this is an event. An event will will either take place or has taken place. Does that make sense? So. You're saying an, an event is like a union view or an umbrella view. It could be something in the episode service or it could be a workflow. It's not a workflow. It's definitely not a workflow. This is what we try to do. We, we try to move the workflow out of, out of everything because the, the workflow actually is, is, is um, processing a recording in some way, right? There's the recording and you can have multiple processing happening to, to the recording of multiple processing, um, how should I say that? Well, multiple workflows per recording. Okay. So is an event like a primary data entity? Like is there a table for events or is an event something, does the UI just show you as an event That's several it. different types of things? Yes, exactly. The, which, the which UI one? tries to make sense of all the services in the back end that have a notion of an event. Okay. Like the you know the workflow service may have um, multiple workflows on a given event. The scheduling service may have a notion of an event because you know it's scheduled. Um, the archive okay. obviously has a notion of event. So, so an event could be different types of things, but the UI shows it to you as one thing. It's it's actually not different types of things. It's just it's the one thing which is a recording, right? But it may be in different states. It may be scheduled. It may be ingesting. It may be processing, or it may just be sitting there because it was already archived and published or not published. Or 
Because in, in the end, what you want to manage is, is not workflows. You don't want to manage workflows. You want to manage media, assets. assets, right? The recordings is what you want to manage. At least from, from our point of view. Yeah, I was hoping Judy would, or, or maybe I was anxious. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I think it's the recording. What, you know, what we called recordings at the beginning, conceptually, was never supposed to be the workflow. It was supposed to be the recording. And at that time, the only thing that was available <coughs> were the workflows. So that's what ended up showing up in, in that list. So I, I guess I would just, I'm conceptualizing it as the recording, what really should be on that recordings page. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong and if an event is something different than a recording. No, it is the it's same thing. It's the same thing. thing. Okay. Yeah. We had okay. lots and lots and lots of discussion. Olaf almost started screaming at me at, at some point. Same with Andy. It's very difficult once you're used to the Matterhorn admin UI to, to you know, get away with or put away with, with you know, being focused on workflows. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but long term, I, I think it's the right step. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and so if a particular recording has been, you know, reprocessed, so it's gone through a number of workflows, is there a way to get at that in this UI? Yeah, I mean, this, this is basically, I think, what, what we're talking about here. Um, I need to get rid of this somehow anyways. Some bugs in here, obviously. So we have here in this recording, this event, um, there's a workflows tab where we can see like all the processing that has happened. I'm not going to click it because I know it's empty. Um, it hasn't been implemented yet. Um, but basically this is, the, before, before that in the current admin UI you would, you would, you would get hold of a list of, of like processing steps that had been applied to a recording. You could also go to the archive, look at the same recording you know, in its archive state and, and nobody was able to grasp the concept of the archive just because everyone was focused on the workflows. And in the end, it was very difficult to convince people that you know it's actually the same data they're looking at. It's the same media package or recording. And yeah, so ho th hopefully with this redesign, um, we're getting closer. Yeah, I think, I think it's really important because um, when we first came to um, Matterhorn, um, you, you just assumed that the the, the list that you were seeing was sort of the recordings and you didn't realize that it was the workflows because we hadn't got as far as retracting and doing multiple workflows and then you get things in the same list that look the same, but they're all you know, the same date and schedule. And then uh, we, we just started just when the archive was added and stuff. So what the hell's the archive <laughs> kind of thing? So uh, we, we've all got used to that now. And so I think this is, it, this is slightly harder for us to, almost hard for us to understand. But I think for a new adopter, this is obvious because the whole workflow views thing is actually really confusing and abstract, whereas this makes the sense and it's like, you know, it's the lecture, whatever's happened to it is a subset of, of that recording. Um, I think it's, when you get into pro looking at Matt Horney and stuff, you get used to, you know, asking for the, the, most of the time you're looking at the workflows kind of thing, but, you know, there's that, there's the recording, rest endpoint, which gives you the, you know, the, 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 the event kind of thing. So that's actually what it should be kind of hanging off uh, okay, are we good to oh, go ahead? Uh, you go? If it's okay, I would uh, Please? have uh, some. Um, I'm not sure about uh, what we currently have with the actions column and what you still have in there. So, um, will this area be in a way at least configurable uh, or something? So, um, from my point of view, what's kind of disturbing is at the moment the view info or what you have here with the... So I always ask myself, why can I, can't I click on the whole um, entry in the list and get to this view? And I only would need a few actions uh, in the back of where the actions are currently. And I'm not sure if even deleting should be there from my point of view, as it happens quite uh, not too often. And if something where I need to confirmation dialogue uh, um, should not show up there from my point of view. Yeah, one, one issue we have um, talking about the delete button is that in Matterhorn everything is a workflow or almost everything. So if I, if I hit the delete button, the thing is not gone, right? A workflow is started that will eventually get rid of the recording. 
Um, so that, that is a, a UI issue, right? Um, and uh, the other thing is um, the, the original wireframes or, or the, or the original designs that, that we did, um, and again, we, we had no idea what, what we were doing. Um, we were envisioning a list of actions that you could apply to, to individual recordings. Um, just as you said, so more, you know, more like you, you could be adding um, to that. And, and we may return to that at some point. Just for now, um, it, it seemed like most of the work could be done in the modal. Like if you wanted to, to, to edit something, change something, um, delete something, add something, it could all be done in the modal. So, you know, the, this small number of actions would, would be good enough. But as soon as we're entering, you know, hold states and, and things like that, um, I, I agree with you. Uh, and one other point would be uh, when you come to hold states and so on, from my point of view, what I'm missing is a view of uh, these are the items where you have to take actions on. Mm -hmm. So even filtering would be okay, but a start screen, I would say, that told, tells me, okay, here you have to look for if it's commented or in a hold state or whatever. Um, yeah, there are a number of things in here that um, I didn't show because um, they will not be completed in the first phase. So I didn't want to show them to you because they, they won't get done anyways um, anytime soon. But in this case, I'll, I'll, I'll do it anyways unless Andy... No, he doesn't. Okay. So the, the main thing that we, we were anticipating, and then obviously it's not, not um, Chrome compliant for some reason. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so we were um, we were hoping that um, there would be a dashboard in the very beginning greeting you with all the relevant data, um, you know, showing you like the you know like here the the errors, um, things that are on hold, you know, a system overview, what is what is up for scheduling and so on. Unfortunately, this whole screen um, is not implemented yet and won't be implemented in phase one, just because it's an awful lot of work and we can get by without it. Um, but I like the calendar view, I must say. What was it's, that? Uh, I like the calendar view, especially not for upcoming scheduled events. We always have to, we are missing an event in the past and clicking on the I day. Know. Would no, no, I know. I'm fine. looking forward to, to see this um, come to life. Um, the, the, again, the poor man's solution for the problem um, we are discussing right now, one you mentioned already, you filter by status everything that's on hold. Um, so there is a status on hold. And the other thing is um, we were hoping to, to, to make use of this, um, which is the notification area. So once you log in, you would in here see like, okay, there are four recordings I need to take care of. Um, but this also isn't implemented as of now, and, and we're not sure if it will make the first cut. Okay. Okay. In this case, I'll um, move on. We're done soon, just so you know. Um, so what are what are the the conclusions? By the way, I, those are all pictures from the trip to Japan. That that tea was fantastic. I was I was high two two hours later. Um, so in case of uh, in terms of the timeline, um, we're right now finishing or wrapping up work. Uh, I, at least I, I like to think of of the current stage as wrapping up. Um, we're discussing final design work with Express Labs. Um, the UI is being implemented or. or Implementation is finalized. Same uh, is true for the back end, so we, we need to change certain things around. Um, in, in the end, um, we're, we're um, very confident we can get uh, done by, by June latest. Um, and um, finalize, finalize in this case um, means you know we get roughly 80% done of what we wanted to get done. Um, but we're, um, so the whole thing is intended as a replacement for the current admin UI. Um, if it gets um, uh, accepted by the community, all of us, that is. Um, and uh, in terms of getting in, involved, um, once it's done, when the code base, once the code base is complete, um, we're going to, to put it on the branch. At least that's the plan right now. Feel free to chime in if you, if you have better ideas um, so people can take a look. They can, you know, they can give initial feedback. They can see if it works for them because it is a bit different. Um, and uh, one thing that is that is really important, and I think Olaf, um, wherever he is, there you are, will be talking to that in more detail. Um, so you have seen that there are people involved in the work that are not in the community, which means they're not working for free, like all of us. 
um, which also means that as soon as you, you raise your hand and, and you know, you're saying, well, this button is really not where it should be, it should be over there. Um, button is probably not a good example, but we're talking about, you know, um, well, relevant changes. Um, there's the need for funding at some point, you know. So either you walk in and, and make all the changes yourself, um, that's one strategy, and, and the other one is right now in the initial phase, our suggestion will be, and again, Olaf is, is uh, talking to that again, um, to coordinate, just because um, this thing is just growing. If we now walk in and you know tear it apart and, and everybody starts making their changes, it's not going to work well for all of us. At least that's, that's my take. Um, so make sure if, if you see things like you, you really want that dashboard, you know, because it, it adds what you've been hoping for, um, you know, we now need to, to work together with other people that, that, you know, are not working for us directly. So we need to pay them. Um, it's, it's a bit different than, than before or f than for other parts of, of um, Matterhorn. Closing remarks from, from uh, my point of view. Um, I think this is a major step forward. It may be a step backward in you know certain small areas that you you know you love about the old admin UI that are not there in the new admin UI. That's always the case. But in general, um, I think um, it will convince adopters of the of the quality of Matterhorn. Um, if you talk to today's adopters, many of them are happy with what they get with Matterhorn. You know, it's customizable. It's it's performing pretty well. Um, it's uh, extensible and scalable and so on and so forth, and it's open source and the community is great, but everybody will talk to you about the horrible admin UI, um, which is, you know, not exposing everything, it's outdated, um, it's not, you know, helping uh, implement their, their local processes. This will definitely not be the final version, but again, I hope it's a step forward. Um, I was talking about the customization part, um, I strongly suggest we coordinate and talk to each other when moving forward. Um, and that's, from my point of view, at least the only way the admin UI will, will serve the community best. And the community, that's us, who, who are running Matterhorn and, and using it in production, but it's also all the adopters that are, you know, looking at Matterhorn for the first time, and the UI is the thing that sells, unfortunately. I love talking about the technology stack, but in the end, People want to see a demo, take a look, and it needs to look nice and look professional. Yeah, just some feedback about that. So at the request of Olaf and the board, I've been to a bunch of conferences uh, effectively promoting Matterhorn. And we, we didn't choose Matterhorn because it was open source, and neither will a bunch of other people. They, they, they want it to be effective. And, you know, it's really easy to sell it on its scalability and its modular uh, nature. But as soon as uh, potential users see the admin UI, that is hands down the biggest problem that they have with it. And then they're straight off to essentially, you know, what is in many ways an inferior product in, in, a, in another vendor's booth that just kind of looks shiny. Yeah. Yeah, we received the, the same feedback over and over. And it, I mean, again, it's, it's important to know where the, where the, the current admin UI is coming from. Um, Judy can speak uh, more to that, um, I guess. It, it was designed for the very first phase of, of the, the, the Matterhorn project. Um, there, was, and there were two phases intended. The second phase got skipped for multiple reasons. Um, so really, we're, we are with, with an admin UI that you know, was, was not meant to be here at, at that point in time. So it's 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 natural, kind of natural that it's you know it's not sufficient for what we're doing right now. Certainly not at the scale um, you're you're working on. Okay, uh, as a developer, um, is that going to be a user story? <laughs> as a developer, I was wondering uh, what do you need to uh, build this and uh, what do you need as uh, uh, additional third party tools? I mean, you mentioned AngularJS, for example, but uh, I think that will be provided. You mentioned Grunt. Uh, I guess that's something I have to install as a developer and also as a doctor. No, as, a, as an adopter, you will get a, a Matterhorn bundle. You know, it's, uh, it's nothing you need to care about. It's just one bundle that gets deployed with, with your Matterhorn installation. You may need to do an additional RPM um, for that, um, but that's it. Okay, so uh, no additional third party tools. Nothing. Yeah. Okay, as, cool. as a developer, I, I mean, I was able to in install all of this to, to, you know, to get the showcase working. 
in, in, in like 15 minutes and that's saying something. Okay, and then a second thing that's uh, not so much development, but a little bit more <laughs> in uh, the direction of adopters. You mentioned that it will be uh, way easier to uh, modify the admin UI, mm -hmm. and uh, so I didn't. Say, I didn't actually. Say, I hope I didn't say easier. Um, it is, you know, right right now it's very very difficult to to modify the current admin UI for multiple reasons. It's not documented, first of all. Yes. Um, there's a lot of business logic going on in the admin UI. So, for example, we're doing parsing and creation of Dublin Core documents, which really shouldn't be happening, ideally, in an admin UI. And all these things are not there anymore. So, it's, you know, it's, uh, the, the application structure is much easier to understand. It is documented. Lots of the business logic has been moved back to the back end. And this is why I would think it becomes easier. Um, on the other hand, you know, you need to know Angular which again makes it you know, a bit more difficult because it's not your usual uh, jQuery uh, kind, of, kind of work. Okay, but I think that's okay. Uh, one last question for me, uh, when I mo want to modify it, uh, the whole uh, HTML and uh, JavaScript stuff, and so uh, will it become part of the uh, JAR file or uh, is it uh, located somewhere else and I can't just uh, modify it without actually compiling the module again? That was the one slide I was, where I was talking about modifications and customizations. And I, I hope I made it clear that this part has not been done, not been completed. So right now, it's all part of the jar file. If you want to change something, you need to recompile, just as, just as you need to do with uh, today's admin UI. Um, but hopefully, um, at some point, we'll be able to build in that customization um, capability. And then uh, my guess is it will, you know, some parts of the admin UI, those that should be customizable, are either moved to the database or they are on the file system for easy access. Uh, Lars, maybe I can comment on on your question about will it be easier? Um, from my uh, experience with Angular, it will become easier. By that, it's it has a very strict way of how to organize the data, the modules, and things like that. So I think what what Angular did is what Maven did to, to the Java development. Before you had programs structured somehow and every program was structured different. And now you have Maven so you know where the tests are, where your files are, your resources are. And for Angular it's, it's the same. You know that your JavaScript code is under app, you have modules there, you have, and so, so you, you know where to, to look. Lots of convention, just like Maven, it's a great, a great comparison. Tobias, for uh, groups that are in production, like uh, Manchester and Berkeley, can you hear me? For groups that are in production, like Manchester and Berkeley, mm -hmm. I'm wondering about um, the upgrade path mm -hmm. and about uh, regression with older, older semesters if we continue to have those in our production system. So will we see them? Will there be issues in the way they appear within this UI? So in, in theory, both UIs can be used in parallel. Um, I think also in practice, um, although it has not been proven to work. Um, there's one thing I was mentioning before, um, that's the incidents, um, like the, the localized error messages I was referring to. Those need an upgrade path. Um, we are um, currently working on that. It will be complete, either it has been completed, I did not check email um, as of late, or it will be completed within the next day. So there will be a, a script running, you know, that will be um, migrating your data. And other than that, you'll be fine. Okay, uh, just a second. I, I would like, almost would like to table that discussion because we're supposed to end and we've got a couple of things to, to organize before we leave. Is everyone fine with staying for another 10, 15 minutes? Okay. Jody, you had a question? No. I'll try to keep it quick. Uh, to be as in, in past conversations or presentations you've talked about, how originally the idea was there would be multiple roles. So there might be an admin UI for administrators, there might be a, a video production role, a professor role. Has your thinking on that changed at all? The last part I missed. Uh, do you still like that idea? I still like that idea. Okay. And, and what, what gave you the idea that we wouldn't? Because Sven, Sven mentioned that you would like to sort of have different roles and different admin UIs, therefore, and also the original idea at ETR was that we have basically 
what we call video managers they that do the the daily business and we have a system administrator and they should see totally different things mm -hmm. starting with the dashboard and and mm -hmm. concerning all the tabs that uh, you have seen basically that's I mean, this is this is a wider discussion, I guess. From it's it's my belief that at some point, um, when when you customize a system strongly, you know, and you're you're actually modifying it to your, you know, very specific workflows. At one point, you will not get around, you know, building your own specific parts of the UI that may be outside of this UI actually. So at some point, you want to leave the admin UI, the admin UI, like like uh, Manchester did. I'm I'm spoiling everything, I guess. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I didn't spoil anything. So, so they they basically took part of of the admin UI, you know, basically the the hold states, and moved it to to a separate part, which makes a lot of sense because there are people are coming there that are not doing nothing else than you know just resolving or working on those hold states. Um, I I still think there is room for an for a, a producer application. So that that is a user that is just concerned with the events part. Maybe not even series, only events, and you know they're changing metadata, they are publishing, unpublishing. They're maybe um, cutting and trimming, and that's it. And and I think they deserve their own UI at some point because they don't want to get this admin kind of view. They want to see like my recordings and the recordings from last week and the ones I need to take action on, and that's it. I think. Okay, more questions regarding the. Admin UI? <laughs> Don't worry. As soon as, as no one feels that... Uh... No, no, no. Come on. Uh, it's... No, I just wondering if this, if this is one module, one jar, or does it modify other base modules in Matterhorn? It's actually two jars. Um, Christoph was doing work on it, so there's some... some uh, he, he's, he's big on refactoring, as you all know, so some of the you know, functionality that could be pulled outside is pull, has been pulled outside. Um, but other than that, it's it's those two jars. Uh, those those um, I'll refer to it as, as one jar anyway. So it's one one module basically. Um, it it ships all the rest endpoints that are used to to serve the um, the data for the admin UI. Um, it serves the localization data. It it serves the um, HTML pages and everything. You know, you take it away, the admin UI is gone. You put it there, it's there. Um, one change you need to make is is in in um, the security configuration which now needs to take you to another page, not to slash welcome slash whatever that was, um, but to the new page, and that's it. That yes, you, you could be running both admin UIs in parallel. Okay. Um, I think I was supposed to talk about um, what, what um, is down there. Is that about the... I think so. No. Oh, the the, the fact that uh, if if you if you have requirements around the the admin UI, um, you should also make sure that uh, you have some ideas about how to to f make them come true. Um, and basically, that that is a, a financial issue, of course. And I gave you, or I hope I gave you some indication that that we had some concerns around the financial side of things here, for sure. But Basically, I don't think that this is this is uh, too difficult uh, a, a situation to to grasp. In that, if if we take care of the admin UI, we certainly are not saying that we can sponsor any any universities or institutions' idea about what can come on top of that. Um, as as to be as indicated, we're not talking about minor issues here, but. If, if you have uh, ideas about what, what should change in, in future stages of the admin UI, or if you have a certain need locally that you, that you have to um, uh, realize within the admin UI, uh, we would feel uh, a, as partners with, with Entwine and with uh, Switch responsible and, and uh, the first contact uh, you should talk to. Uh, but at the same time, the, 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 the question of, of how to finance the, the adequate steps to realize that would certainly come to the table soon. And I don't think that's, that's a, a major difference because if you, if you do work on the current up in the UI, you also invest some money even if you have someone just uh, hacking it locally. That's uh, money also you spend uh, mm. in, in that particular situation. 
Yeah, maybe, maybe one comment to that as well. It's, it's, it's kind of difficult, the whole situation. You know, this, this admin UI is here now. Um, it has been funded by, you know, by ETH, by, by Entwine um, as of now. Um, but there are already people lined up, you know, who want to do or who want to get major things done in the admin UI, all, all of which um, I think are, are, you know, towards what the community would, would need and want. But again, that's my opinion. Um, so the whole thing, it's not that it's, it's sitting there and, and it's not moving anymore. You know, it, it will be moving quite a bit over the, the couple of, over the next couple of months. Um, certainly until I, I would think um, August, September, there will be heavy work. Um, done on the admin UI. Um, that's for Manchester mostly. Mostly um, that is for for Switch and last but not least um, for ETH because I, I told you I only got two bullet points done. Um, so um, so that the whole thing should be in the community and it should work as you know all the other code. You should be able to you know just get it and and change it and you know whatever. On the other hand, I I think um, I want to emphasize what Olaf said. That I think the model. Um, that we had so far for individual components, like like the, the engaged player, you know, worked very well. It was open; all the code is available. It can be changed, but it, everybody realized, or most people realize, it makes a lot of sense to talk to Osnabrück um, when when talking or discussing um, the player. Same was true with the capture agent, and there were still people out there that you know made modifications um, the way they wanted them. Um, but I think we got quite a bit out of out of having those centers of what would you call them? Competency? I don't know. Not that we're competent, but you know, it's a, it's about having a responsibility for a certain part of Maton, and um, I think that um, as far as the capture agent, for example, is concerned, things have changed because when we when we started, there was uh, well not much that m movement we we see today as far as as vendor solutions are concerned. So we think that today we can offer you uh, quite a bit of flexibility with respect to, to capture agents coming from, from vendors, from commercial uh, solutions. Uh, and the situation is different when it comes to other components of, of or modules, whatever you want to call them, of Matterhorn. And we think that uh, taking care of the uh, admin UI is, is one of the major issues. And uh, Osnabrück taking care of, of the engage end is, is another major issue, and uh, that got uh, 80 percent or, or more covered and basically um, we think that it, that is a, a good solution we, we we're not saying and Osnabrück certainly isn't saying that they are uh, dictating the way that that this is sort of developing so um, I think that every time uh, Rüdiger and or others from Osnabrück were presenting uh, the, the the player they also invited you to comment and this is what what we did at uh, San Diego and we're still doing and uh, this is uh, hopefully a way to move forward uh, on top of what I think is a, is a very attractive uh, admin UI, uh, basically. Yeah, and, and in general, I think it, it emphasizes what, what should be done much more, which is com um, communication amongst um, adopters and contributors and partners. You know, what, what are your plans? I'm, I'm going to, you know, suggest um, this and that change. Would you, would you be in, you know? These kind of things um, can be improved, I think. One, one more aspect to keep in mind, and then I'm done. I'll switch it off just to make sure after that. Um, the, the guys from, from uh, Espress Labs um, indicated that it was not that horrible to work with us, that they would, you know, they would kind of um, s stay around. Um, you know, we were, our intention is to, to make this a long-term relationship, you know, continue to work with them so we can make sure we have a design language, you know, across the whole UI. Um, and that's, I guess, is another reason to coordinate around um, work in the admin UI. So we're able to feed, you know, change requests um, through them um, just to make sure things stay in sync in terms of design language. Switching it off now. Okay, talking about design language, um, as we said, there would be uh, the, I, the, there is the idea of having another session where, where, the guys from Express Labs would present their uh, design principles and, and uh, the style guide, basically. Can I have a show of hands who would be interested in joining that session tomorrow or on Thursday? Okay, that's quite a large number, so probably it's not good to have a breakout session for that. Um, we'll see 
to this tomorrow morning. We'll have another organizing session anyway. Um, I need, uh, first of all, thanks to BS for the for the presentation.